out back in a minute, Joe. I just want to show Lucy my sailfish. Our sailfish? I brought it in. On my line? Yeah, only because you were too seasick to care. Well, I told you it was that 24-hour flu I had. But it lasted for three days. Oh, what a vacation. You know, that fish looks better than you do. No, nothing fussy. Make it very simple and quiet. I'm sure he would have wanted it that way. Yes, I'll make... Hi, Lizzie. Well, back from the high seas, rested, relaxed, and ready for... Lucy. What? What's the matter? Why? <sighs> Lucy. Come in. Oh, excuse me. This here's the Michael Shane office, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Lucy, come on, wake up. Too bad about that Shane fella. It is. Yeah, I hear he was a nice guy. toothpaste that reduces cavities as no regular toothpaste can. And Pillsbury, makers of light, fluffy Pillsbury refrigerated biscuits. And Rinse Away, the medicated rinse for a clean, dandruff-free scalp. Present tonight's Michael Shane. <laughs> Because of youngsters like these, your youngsters can use a toothpaste recognized effective against cavities. The toothpaste, Crest. The youngsters, a few of hundreds in a year's test of toothpaste. Who used Crest? Crest! Regular toothpaste? Crest! Any special instructions? No, nope, we brush like always, but our side got 36% fewer cavities with Crest. Have you put Crest to work in your family? Remember, Crest is the only toothpaste recognized effective against cavities by the American Dental Association. Their Council on Dental Therapeutics says Crest has been shown to be an effective decay preventive dentifrice that can be of significant value when used in a conscientiously applied program of oral hygiene and regular professional care. So avoid between meal treats. Visit the dentist regularly and brush often with Crest with Fluoristan, the only toothpaste recognized effective against cavities. What's the gag? 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 You're supposed to be dead. Well, so I gathered. Oh, Mike, I'm, I'm so, so glad you're alive. Oh, well, so am I. You know, a three-day fishing trip is seldom fatal for anyone except the fish. You were killed in a plane crash. I was? What plane crash? Famous detective dies at sea. Michael Shane, renowned Miami private investigator, died yesterday when a small chartered plane owned by the Ace High Air Service crashed into flames in the Gulf of Mexico en route to Key West. Key West. Witnesses on shore saw the tiny plane hit the waters in flames. It sank almost immediately, taking with it the bodies of the pilot, identified as J.J. J. Wilson, and his famous passenger. Like me. There's another report. 
Ace-high air service. I never even heard of the outfit. Well, thank heaven for that. Now, why would anyone charter a plane in my name? I thought maybe you had plans in Key West. You know, something you didn't want me to know about. No, no. Now, the last time I had plans in Key West, uh, she turned out to be married to a judo expert. Mike! We don't get that fish out of the sun pretty quick. We're gonna have trouble. Joe, where have you been? Oh, hi, Lucy. You're fishing with him. What's everybody so joyous about? Uh, pretty, isn't it? Mike who? Shane. Gee, that's too... What are you talking about? Yeah, read it. Now, you see, if you hadn't gone fishing, you could have written my obituary. You mean there's another Mike Shane? I called the airline as soon as I read the news. They told me he gave your home address, Mike, and this business address. Lucy, as far as you know, and you too, Joe, I'm still dead. Wait a minute, Mike. What about the funeral services? They're scheduled for tomorrow morning. Just don't cancel them. I don't want to disappoint anybody. Three days on a fishing boat with a dead man. No wonder I got seasick. Johnson. Oh, well, I'm sorry. We're not booking any more flights for a while. <laughs> no, no, I'm, uh, I'm an insurance adjuster. Curtis Insurance Company. Oh, another one. Afraid so. Guess that uh, air crash caused a lot of activity around here, huh? Yeah, we haven't had one in years. You'd think it was the end of the world or something. Well, it was for Mr. Shane. Oh, is he your client? Yeah, I'll uh, have to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. The name's Gloria. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I uh, must have the wrong office. Hey, who's she? I don't know. Powder room's on one side and the bar's on the other. All day long they come in here and make their mistakes. <laughs> uh, uh, now, uh, let's get down to this uh, plane crash. The CAB is investigating. We'll ground it till we hear from them. I've already checked with them. What I need is some information on the passenger. Oh. Michael Shane. Here's his address. Hmm. Destination? Key West. Says so right here. Did he give any address in Key West? No. Have there been any inquiries from there? You know, anyone who might have been expecting him? The only call I got was from his secretary, here in Miami. Hmm. No word from the relatives? No. You know, I have had trouble trying to locate any family of his. Figures. Who'd want to admit being related to a uh, slob like that? Slob? In spades. Are you sure we're talking about Michael Shane, S-H-A-Y-N-E? Who else? He even looked like a private eye. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Oh, you know. About this tall and twice as wide. Shifty little eyes and flat nose and dirty fingernails and a little grease spot on his hat. Well, now, I'd always heard he's a, well, rather was a very personable gentleman. <laughs> yes, very personable. Like King Kong. Now, if you don't mind, uh, I have a little work to do, so you can pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, look, if you hear from his relatives or friends, uh, I'd appreciate knowing about it. Sure. Give me your card. Well, I'm on the go quite a bit. I'll check with you if you don't mind. Mm. Suit yourself. Oh, uh... Oh, well, that's all. Thank you very much. Eddie? Gloria, he just left the office. <laughs> yeah, he was posing as an insurance adjuster, asking all sorts of questions. I did just like you told me. From now on, baby, he's all yours. Hey, wait a 
minute. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I, I hope I didn't cause any damage. Oh, now, don't you worry about a thing, not even a scratch. It was an accident, really. Oh, it's perfectly all right. However, just in case there might be some um, hidden damage. You'd like to know where you can reach me? Yeah. Blame me. My name is Myra Tarvo. I'm Mike Shane. You know, I don't know when I ever... I don't appreciate your sense of humor. <laughs> I got my hands full. Oh, I see. Yeah, Shane fella sure must have been a popular guy. Where will I set this? Right there. Oh. Now, that's what I call using your head. Whoever sent that had practical sense, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, well, thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. You wouldn't believe the money that folks throw away on flowers. Now, you take all of these. They're just going to die out in that cemetery. But now this, this is going to live forever. It will? Yes, ma'am. Yes, indeed. Yes. You take it home after the ceremony, and as long as you feed it, and as long as you take care of it, it'll always be there. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Oh, no, ma'am, I couldn't, no. Uh, you've already tipped me two dollars, and uh, I have a ceiling for these kind of occasions. Weddings are different, but, but a funeral, well, well, let's just say I chalk it up to ethics. <laughs> These flowers bother me. Yeah. And uh, just how do you think they make me feel? Are you still playing dead? Yeah, for a little while. I'm trying to find out a little more about that imposter. Only important people have imposters, Mike. I'd feel flattered if I were you. Oh, I do, I do. According to the airlines, Mike Shane is a fat little slob with... Oh, another one, huh? Yes. With uh, shifty little eyes, uh, grease stains on his hat, dirty fingernails. They just don't appreciate the real you. That's right. And according to Myra Tarvo, I even have a lousy sense of humor. Who's Myra Tarvo? You want to know something? I haven't the slightest idea. Mike, I've got something to tell you. Oh, and Joe, you better get out of those clothes. You're beginning to smell more like that sailfish every minute. No time. I was checking into that plane crash. Uh oh? The CAB says it was due to faulty equipment. Gross negligence on part of the airline. Good, we can sue them. Lucy, I'm dead, remember? Oh, I keep forgetting. Any chance of them recovering the bodies? No, they, they sank too far offshore. Michael Shane, office. Just one moment, Mr. Bradford. Bradford Mortuary, they want to deposit for your funeral services. Tell them I'll send them a check. Mr. Bradford, Mr. Shane says he'll... I mean, uh, I'll see that you get a check. For heaven's sakes, Mike, you can't write a check for your own funeral. All right, so write it yourself. But uh, just keep in mind to bury me in the style to which I am accustomed. Oh, and if you need me, I'm staying at the Bayshore Hotel under the name of Johnson. You know something? He's more difficult to live with dead than alive.
Joe Demers? Joe, this is Mike. No, no, no. Nothing wrong. Uh, just a little curious. Look, uh, does the name Myra Tarvo sound familiar to you? Well, I wouldn't say that. You see, uh, all I actually know about her is the way she drives and looks. Yeah, lousy and gorgeous, and in that order. Well, look, uh, see what you can find out tomorrow, huh? Okay. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Caramel Nut Rolls, Pillsbury Quick Caramel Nut Rolls, America's new way to bake. You start with a head start. Refrigerated fresh dough ready to slice with cinnamon sugar rolled right in and luscious caramel nut topping. Crumble the topping into muffin cups, add rolls and bake. Makes eight delicious rolls. Nothing says loving like something from the oven. And Pillsbury says it best. Pillsbury Quick Caramel Nut Rolls in your grocer's dairy case. And now, refrigerated cookies from Pillsbury in the dairy case. Pillsbury slice and bake cookies in four delicious flavors. Refrigerated fresh dough, just slice and bake. Each roll makes three to four dozen quick and easy, simply delicious cookies. Try slice and bake cookies from Pillsbury. Pillsbury, the famous cake mix people. your car. So? A dead man seldom drives to his own funeral. Well, even if they do recognize it, just tell them you were driving. Well, suppose someone notices you. <laughs> they won't. Oh, doesn't it give you the shutters, Mike? I mean, being so, so close to... Close to death? No, I've been a lot closer many a time. a little time to ourselves. I understand. Are you a close friend of the deceased? Oh, yes, yes, very. His most ardent admirer. The entrance to the family room is right around that corner. You'll have complete privacy there. No extra charge. Thank you. Sir, you do approve of the flower arrangements, don't you? Oh, yes. Yes, they're lovely. It's such a disadvantage not having a coffin as a centerpiece. But I've tried desperately to capture the essence, the spirit of Mr. Shane's personality. Oh, I, I think you've done just fine. As a matter of fact, I can almost feel his presence right here in the room. Really? Hmm? Yes, you do feel him in the gladiolus, don't you? Actually, I'd say he's more the crabgrass type. I'm very pleased, Mr. Bradford. I'm sure Mr. Shane would be pleased, too. Uh, what time do the guests arrive? Oh, very shortly. I'll see that you're not disturbed in the family room.
time is service is supposed to start? Well, like he said, when the mourners get here. Sergeant McCord. What's wrong? More. You look like you've seen a ghost. I think I have. I could have sworn. Mike? Well, if I'm gonna sleep tonight, I'd better find him. Take it easy. It's, it's, it's only family resemblance. Mike's cousin. You never mentioned any cousins to me. Of course not. You're a cop. So? Well, Mike's cousin runs a book in Jacksonville. Remember that. Your blood is the blood of the Moors, the ancient Spaniards. Uh, excuse me. You must dance with fervor, with intensity, with fire. I'm looking for Miss Tarbo. Vamos. Tarbo been here today? Yeah, she's here. Found the dressing room. Oh, thank you. Come in. Good morning. 
How nice. The man with the morbid sense of humor. Uh, you really get around, don't you? From the airport to the mortuary, now here. What were you doing at the mortuary? I'd like to ask you the same question. I stopped in to pay my respects to Mr. Shane. Mm -hmm. Flattered. If I hadn't written to him, he wouldn't have been in that plane crash. You wrote to me? I wrote to Mike Shane. Well, let's get this straightened out. I am Mike Shane. If you're Mike Shane, I'm Isadora Duncan. All right, Isadora. Just pick up that phone and call anyone on the Miami police force. Any one of them can identify me. Why are you trying to confuse me? Look, you know a whole lot more about this mix-up than I do. You know why that imposter was on the plane. And you also probably know why someone tried to murder me last night. Murder you? That's right. Now, you'd better start right at the beginning. If you don't, I'll take you down to police headquarters, bust this mess wide open, and get it all over everybody. Would you lock the door, please? All right. My husband's Johnny Tarvo. Have you heard of him? No. Well, he's been a runner for the big crime syndicate here. He was just a flunky, but uh, got in too deep. And now he wants to quit. That could be fatal. Well, he volunteered to testify before the investigating committee in Washington. It could give him a new start. Does the Syndicate know about this? Is there anything the Syndicate doesn't know? No, not much. He's been hiding out on an island near Key West till he goes to Washington. I wrote to Mr. Sh to you from there asking you to help Johnny. Well, I never received that letter, Mrs. Tarville. Must have been intercepted. That was a Syndicate man on the plane? Using your name? Must have been. He was probably on his way to eliminate your husband. They really do know everything. But they didn't know that plane was going to crash. That means their killer was killed and your husband is still all right. Please, Mr. Shane, help him. He's got information that'll blast the Syndicate apart. I don't know. See, your uh, husband's playmates are after me, too. And you've got to help him for your sake as well as his. All right. Is your husband still on that island? No, he's here in Miami. Here? Where? Well, I'd rather not say. Oh, now look. Please, Mr. Shane, we have to be very, very careful. Well, certainly. I'll see to it that he meets you at 11 o'clock at night at the Club Seville. Well, why there? Well, because I work there and I know the people I can trust. Itana, we have work to do, rehearsing to do. Momento, Jose. Ask for la gitana. La gitana. That's my stage name. Come on. 
Bartender, is La Gitana here? She's here. Where? She's downstairs in the dressing room. Oh. I uh, wonder if there's someone who could tell her she has company. Tell her yourself. She's waiting. Come on. Oh, thanks. Shane, they're going down. You heard him, Shane. Better now? No, I can still see you. <laughs> Not for long, Shane. Who do I thank for this headache? Myra Tarvel? You guys. Thank like that plane crash. If that hadn't happened, Johnny Tarvel would be dead now. We wouldn't have to worry about you at all. Car's all ready to go. How's Sleeping Beauty here? You worried about me because of Johnny Tarvel? No, because of Mike Shane. I'm flattered. As long as you know there was a phony using your name, you're going to cause us trouble. Right, Polo? Yeah. Yeah, him and Johnny Tarvel. Let's go, Shane. Well, I suppose I'll get it. Same way Johnny Tarvel got it. Tarvel comes later. You guys ought to check your bulletins. Johnny Tarvel's been dead since this afternoon. Who says? The police. Don't you guys know what your own syndicate's doing? Where'd you find out about it? Sergeant McCord. Just happens to be a particular friend of mine. You know, he's not gonna like the way you guys are... Polo. Listen, if Tarvel's already been tumbled... Will you believe this guy? He's trying to confuse us. No, it's your own syndicate that's trying to confuse you, not me. Maybe your bosses didn't want you to know about Tarbo. Yeah. Set you guys up as the patsies. Let you kill me, and then let you take the rap for Tarbo. Listen to him. Come on, Eddie. Let's get him out of here. It only takes a phone call. I tell you, the guy's bluffing. We better check it. Oh, what's the use? They don't want you to kill me anyway. I'll make the call, Bolo. Okay, but make it fast. It's like this guy says, call the boss. Right. Okay. So you got rid of Eddie. Now you got just one to worry about. Go on. Make your move. I wish I could. Just can't clear up these cobwebs. Oh. <laughs> that help any? Not enough. <laughs>
I've got the stuff the lab collected, but it's no good without suspects. Take the list of names I gave you and round them up, fast. Mac, you've got to help me. Devil, you're supposed to be dead. Just take it easy now. That was you I saw at the funeral parlor. Do you know what you've put me through? I know, I know, but I haven't got time to explain right now, so just listen. I've got a couple of killers after me. Yeah, why? Well, there's a dame, a flamenco dancer. Always a dame. Yeah, now she goes by the name of La Gitana, but her real name is Myra Tarbo. What about her? She's on the syndicate payroll. You came all the way back from a nice warm grave to tell me that. Now listen, Mac, you've got to find her and pick her up. She's been hired to hang a target on my back. I always suspected a funeral would slow a man down. Now, but this is serious. Now look, this Myra Tarbo is downstairs in custody. My retard? Suspicion of murder. Who's murder? Her husband's, Johnny Tarbo. But how can she... Mr. Shane, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions. But After you. All right, Mike, what else? Well, she showed up at the airport while I was there, bumped into my car to make sure she'd meet me, and even managed to lure me away from my own funeral. Well, if she'd murder her own husband, she'd have no qualms about finishing you. That's right. And they know they've got to get rid of me, because they know as long as I'm alive, I'll keep asking questions about that phony who died in a plane crash. If she is working for the syndicate, she could probably tell us plenty. Think she might turn state's evidence? Right now, her little neck is in the noose. And your testimony would probably make it very uncomfortable for her. Yeah. Such a pretty little neck, too. Send in Mrs. Tarbo, Pat. All I know is they sure use beautiful bait. Yeah. And she had you on the hook, too. Come in. Mrs. Tarbo? I'm sure you know Mr. Shane. No, I don't. She is not Myra Tarvo. Mac, I'm telling you, this woman is not Myra Tarvo. Well, here we go again. Children need seat belts. Now fasten yours. Okay. Now how about fastening yours? I'm a grown-up. You need a seat belt. I don't. You should have had a seat belt. The National Safety Council says seat belts can reduce serious injuries by one third. Does your family have seat belts? <laughs> What does your Myra Tarvo look like? Oh, for the 18th time, Mike. She had dark hair, dark eyes, olive complexion. She was a flamenco dancer who called herself La Gitana. Now, this may be Myra Tarvo, but I doubt it. Funny thing. I have to prove who I am to be held for murder. You don't have to prove anything, Mrs. Tarvo. We have a file that thick on Johnny and you. All right, then maybe you can identify that dancer. All uh right. -huh. But why not? She belonged to the same syndicate as your husband. You must have gotten to know them pretty well. No, I didn't. I spent my life avoiding them. But you still stayed with your husband. Of course I did. I loved him. I tried to get him to straighten out. I argued and pleaded. I even threatened to leave him, unless he appeared before the crime committee. And that was your idea? Yes, my idea. I even wrote to you, Mr. Shane, to try to get you to protect Johnny. So that letter was intercepted. That flamenco dancer was pretty clever. She knew all the steps. I tried to change him, and I was dead. It just isn't fair at all. All right, Mrs. Tarver, you better get some rest. Pat, see that she gets some sleep. Uh, 
Mac, you don't really think she killed her husband, do you? No, I don't. Any other leads? Just this junk pile from the lab. The lab boys vacuumed it off the floor in Johnny Tarbo's apartment, where they found the body. What's the button from? Johnny Tarbo's shirt. He apparently put up a fight before they shot him. And the hairpins? That's the ones used by Mrs. Tarbo. What's uh, this little thing? It looks like one of those little gold rings they use to hold charms on bracelets. It's bent out of shape, as though it was ripped off. Probably happened during the fight. Could be. Trouble is, we couldn't find the charm, or any other part of a bracelet for that matter. Well, a woman might find the charm, but uh, she might not be able to find a little ring like that. It could have come off a necklace, or even a piece of men's jewelry, like a watch chain or a key ring. Or it might have come off one of those uh, heavy jangly bracelets, you know, the kind of flamenco dancer wears? If I were you, Mac, I'd uh, check that dance studio. Been there. We know it's a front for the syndicate. Yeah? We grilled every one of those heel clickers. All we got was a lot of bullfight music. Maybe I can do a little better. Now, hold on, Mike. I haven't gotten over your last funeral yet. Neither have I. No. No, no, please. Uh, gee, I'm sorry to have to do this to you, Jose. But you're the only one that can lead the cops to La Hatina. But the police, they were here and I told them nothing. Yeah. But they'll be back. Uh huh. A little more pressure and you'll crack like a stale tortilla. I would never give it away, never. You won't have to. We're going to take care of her, too. Wait, please. Come please. on, Bolo, come on. Yeah. Turn around, Jose. It'll be more like a surprise. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, open up. Sergeant McCord, please, and make it quick. Mac, this is Shane. I've got another victim for you. Yeah, the dancing instructor. And bring an ambulance with you. Yeah. Oh, you'll be all right. No. No, I only have a moment. Who did this to you? Eddie Polo. The girl. Maritana. Help her, please. Where is she? Palm Glade's apartment. Palm Glade Drive.
I, I left my gloves. Okay, baby. Come on out of that closet. All right, Bolo. Drop the gun. Every exit's covered. Don't let that thing get away. something, honey? You're not as tough as you think you are. Got your message. Looks like I'm late for the meeting. Yeah, a little bit. You okay? Sure. You got yourself quite a collection of killers here. There's still one missing. Well, are you coming with me or waiting for the next meeting? Charm bracelet. What charm bracelet? Okay. Drop it. You drop it. No right to break in here, no charge. You're not wearing this tonight, Gloria. What's the matter, something wrong with it? Give me that. G-L-O-I-A. No iron, Gloria? So it fell off. Since when is that a crime? Where did it fall off? Johnny Tarvo's apartment? What's he talking about? Murder. Anything you want to add to it? You got no proof. None at all. We've got Bolo and your flamenco dancer friend. They're ready to turn state's evidence. What you don't tell us, they will. Let's go. Thank you. 
Lucy, I didn't realize you had a green thumb. Green as in money. If I return this, I'll get my $15 back. Tell you what we'll do. Change the ribbon on it, send it to Eddie's funeral. You think you'd mind a second hand read? Doubt if he'll even notice it. Lucy, Mike, read it. Page four. It's the best writing I've ever done. Oh, what is it? Your obituary. Joe, Mike isn't playing dead anymore. I know, but I didn't tell him until after this edition got to press. I'll let you talk me out of a sailfish, Mike, but not even you can beat me out of a byline. It's um, kind of short, isn't it? Yeah, I know. They, they cut out the last four paragraphs to make room for a, a cemetery ad. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Here are some exciting moments from next week's Michael Shane mystery. Poor dear Jake, his one moment of glory. I heard Mr. Moon telling the missus he was going to kill her, Your Honor. Do you think he killed her? The blood stains on the hatchet matched her blood type. But they never found her body. She could be scattered all over the neighborhood for all I know. Well, has your wife been down here today? Not that I know of. She's too frightened to come down here alone. Does she know it had been opened? No, I didn't tell her. She's nervous enough as it is. Thanks, love. One of the lenses is broken. Doesn't matter. I have others. One for every outfit and every mood. Mike? Mike, you down there? Don't answer him. Understand me? Not a word. Fred, look out! Tonight's Michael Shane was brought to you by Crest, the toothpaste that reduces cavities as no regular toothpaste can. And by Pillsbury, makers of light, fluffy Pillsbury refrigerated biscuits. And by Rinseaway, the medicated rinse for a clean, dandruff-free scalp.